Good on there, mate. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Yeah, very well, John. Other than the weather, the weather's playing us a bit of a, right. All right. a wobbly, but well, it's all good. Good, good. So you got the answers to those questions then. Let's go. Yes, I have. So I'll oh, far away. Um, okay. All right. Thanks, John, for the six questions. I will answer them in your order. Question one, RTS. For the past five years, I've been laser focused on getting the only suitable flood defence for the River Thames scheme, Channel 1, approved. This is the only flood defence that will protect our house prices and infrastructure. As chairman of the local flood group, flood liaison group, we're working tirelessly uh, for a flood plan for residents in Eatonwick, Datchet, Alton, Raysbury and Old Windsor. So RTS Channel 1 must happen. No excuses. Yesterday, DEFRA confirmed Parliament won't support a national funding option. All the political parties have relied upon this solely and have no backup plan. I have multiple plans, including private funding to install this crucial flood defence for our constituency. If you support installing flood defences to protect our assets, businesses and infrastructure, a vote for David Buckley, your independent candidate, is the only option. Question two, social care. Social care costs now consume 72% of most councils' budgets, pushing them towards bankruptcy and an S114. We need to reset funding from Parliament to local councils and drive costs down for local authorities. Parliament must take responsibility for social care or relax funding rules to allow new revenue streams to flow into councils to support local services. I will work with local councils to cut costs on social care. For example, councils pay up to £75 per night per person for a temporary housing and up to £15,000 per child per week for children's services. We can find ways to reduce these costs without compromising care quality. A swift review of our care system is crucial to reduce council costs from day one. This isn't about one person or one party. We need a collaborative approach to solve these big issues and put politics aside. Three, Brexit. Was Brexit a protest vote? Absolutely. Brexit was a cry from voters fed up with party politics breaking Britain. Again in 2024, politics has driven us further into decline opened our borders and risked breaking democracy. Brexit was a democratic decision that must be supported or we risk breaking democracy and losing the last public trust we have. The value of the vote and democracy itself must be upheld and put first. Brexit showed us we can't trust politicians anymore due to a breach of trust between all political parties and the people. To rebuild trust, we must uphold standards stay true to democracy and base our actions on truth, facts and honesty. We can't lower our standards in public life because we dislike the outcome of a, or because Parliament can't handle a decision by the people. Parliament must, Parliament must stay strong behind democracy and law. Politics must be set aside and we all pull together to make it work now and find the best solutions for us all. Four, LGBTQI+. I'm fully committed to supporting and advancing LGBTQI plus rights. Equality and inclusion are fundamental values that we must uphold to ensure everyone can live their lives free from discrimination and prejudice. We need to continue to fight for equal rights in all areas, from employment and healthcare to education and beyond. It's not just about legal rights but also fostering a society that celebrates diversity and promotes understanding and acceptance. As your representative, I will work tirelessly to protect and promote the rights of LGBTQI+, ensuring that our community remains a place where everyone feels safe, valued and respected. Five, pensioners. I would like to take this further and look at both issues at once. The current living wage of £11.44 per hour is unrealistic in our constituency where the average house price is 690000 and private rent is £1,800 per month. This living wage simply doesn't cover basic living costs. 
pensioners fare even worse with an equivalent of £5.90 per hour. We need to raise both the pension and the living wage to sustainable levels and supply the basic quality of life to everyone. I advocate for increasing the pension to match the living wage and then raising the living wage to a realistic amount in a financially responsible way. This change is necessary and urgent. Due to the restrictive financial environment we find ourselves in, this will take time, but we need to start with a motivation to change and see both incomes lifted annually until we see this put right. We need to see an economy built to sustain our quality of lives, not cutting our quality of lives due to Parliament not growing our economy for decades. We can afford these adjustments faster if we create economic growth, and this is a focus of mine. I want to put more money in your pocket every day. Final question, war crimes. I believe that every war potentially sees war crimes being committed and these should all be investigated at every opportunity. The UK government does not decide who or if a war crime has been committed. It is the responsibility of the International Criminal Court in The Hague. War is terrible and risks war crimes being committed every moment that it continues. A legal framework has been created in modern times to hold countries and individuals to account. We have seen that the current system is capable and historically has investigated and prosecuted countries and people for war crimes. International diplomatic and economic pressures can also be applied to encourage compliance with investigations and prosecutions. I would like to see every war investigated to look into potential war crimes, as I believe ultimately war will see the worst of people and we need to hold individuals and countries account if they break international law. This has been a long one. I thank everyone for listening, um, but I'm under time and have a lovely evening. Take nice care. one. Well done, Dave.